Here's how to navigate your Apple Watch with all the redesigned controls as part of Watch OS X. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and with Watch OS X, Apple is changing the way that you interact with your Apple Watch in many ways from what the digital crown does, what the side button does, where control center was located, all of this has been changed. And quite honestly, I'm still getting used to it after weeks of using this every single day. So here, I'm gonna walk you through all the controls so that you can better navigate your existing Apple Watch with Watch OS X. So here we are inside of Watch OS X. The first thing is using the digital crown. Pressing on the digital crown will take you to your app view, similar to before. But now the app view is shown as a long list of apps versus a single grid that kind of moved around the center. So by default, all of Apple's apps will be here at the top. You can see mail, fitness, calendar, all of those. And then third party apps are down below. But fret not, if you want to move something up that was important, like maybe the Apple Insider app, you can tap and hold on any of those apps and you can move them around. So you can bring the Apple Insider app here towards the top of the screen where you can get to it much more easily. There you go, just where it should be. Then you can also remove app by tapping on the little X icon and to lock it in, press the digital crown once more. If you don't like this view of the apps, you can tap on the gear icon, go down this list until you see the one for app view, and you can change it to a list view instead. So if we go back to our apps, you can see it's a large list of applications. Instead, we can go back to settings and switch to grid view. So whichever one you prefer. Honestly, this long list is a little annoying, but I guess it's quicker than a regular text list view. Uh, it just, it's still not super easy to, to find your apps in this large list view. When you're done, tap the digital crown again to go back to your watch face. You may have noticed I did it once already, but if you double press the digital crown, it's going to open up a new app switcher. Here you can see all of your applications that you had open all the way back in time, so the current ones all the way back. At any point, if an app is acting up, you can take and you can swipe left on that app and tap on the X and you've gone ahead and closed it. But it's a really easy way to move between different applications. So I'm here, I'm in email, double click again. I wanna go back to calendar. Oop, didn't click far back enough, but tap on calendar, move between that one. Double click, makes it really easy just to move between any of your recent open applications. And no, you don't need to start force quitting all your applications because you think it's gonna save battery life on your Apple Watch. It's not, don't do it. Some people still think you need to do this over on your iPhone. It's a waste of time and it doesn't help anything and in fact can hurt your battery life in some ways. So don't just flippantly go force quitting apps on your Apple Watch all the time. Just don't do it. Finally, of course, you can open Apple's digital assistant by just saying its name and the little icon will appear here at the bottom, but you can also do it manually by holding the digital crown. There we go. I can ask any questions that I like and you can see it just reading everything that I'm saying to it, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and dismiss that. So the last thing to check out here using the digital crown is something called smart stack. So on any watch face, you can scroll up from the bottom and this new smart stack view will display. So I can go move over to a different watch face here pull open what else we have to move between. Say the new Snoopy face here. Again, just scroll up and boom, we're in this smart stack view. So you'll see we have the time, we have the date, day of the week, uh, all of that is displayed here. And if we scroll, we can see all of these different widgets that get displayed. Now, if you don't use digital crown, you can also just swipe up from the bottom manually, kind of like how you used control center before but it'll pull up whatever it thinks you need at top. So maybe it thinks I need music to play. So the now playing widget will appear. Um, this is PD, a third party like chat GTP client that we could use. Um, we have weather here. Earlier in the day it was raining and it put the weather right at the top of the smart stack because weather was current, it was happening. I needed to know that. So we moved to the top of the list. So this is similar to the smart stack over on iOS where it'll present you with the widgets that it thinks you need at a particular moment in time. Going through, you can see other ones that we have. There's weather, fitness, and activities. And there's this little quick launcher here where I can tie in any apps that I want so I can jump to find my workouts or messages super fast. I can jump into all apps that way as well, right here from the smart stack. And also, you can add additional widgets to here so you don't have to just use the one. 
tap and hold on this at any point, and we can go ahead and tap on the plus button. I can not add any more because I've added so many, but you can go through and add widgets to this list. There are third-party widgets as well included, so not just Apple's own. By the way, one last thing, if you scroll to the bottom of this list, you don't have to tap on all apps, you can actually just keep scrolling. And once you get to the bottom, boom, it'll just push you right into, their, into that app view. So another quick way to get to all of your apps from a smart stack. Moving on to the side button. So the side button here, this works on all Apple Watches, but pressing it once is gonna pull up the new Control Center. So Control Center still looks and operates just as it did before. Bunch of little toggles, uh, cellular, Wi-Fi, find my iPhone, battery percentages, do not disturb, or the toggle for the audio, theater mode, walkie-talkie, uh, focus modes, flashlights, airplane mode, water ejection, airplay, font sizes, hearing tools, all this stuff you can see. Tap on the edit button, you can change. I can add school time if I'd like to. You can also rearrange all the different widgets here or little toggles inside of Control Center. Press the digital crown to go back. If you hold the side button, it's gonna allow you to do all these things. So it activate the siren, medical ID, compass backtrack, or emergency call, or this is how you can turn your watch off. Tap on the power button, it's gonna tell you slide to power off. Go ahead and cancel that for the moment. Lastly, if we double click that side button, do it a little quicker, double click the side button, it pulls up Apple Pay. So I have immediate access to my credit cards that I have here added to Apple Pay. So I can easily pay double tapping the side button. Hey, sorry to pop into you like that, but I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how you can save up to $1,200 in combined savings because Apple authorized reseller Adorama is giving exclusive discounts to the Apple Insider audience. Let's take a look at how to do it. All you need to do is find the Adorama deal that you want in the Apple Insider price guide. Links in the description. Copy the AP Insider code and click on the activate deal button to route to the products on adorama.com. Don't forget to add Apple Care if you're interested. The extended protection plan is discounted for many Apple products with the same AP Insider coupon code. Step three, during step three of the checkout, click the link that says, do you have a gift card or promo code? And hint, look for the gift icon. Step four, enter the AP Insider code and look for your order total to reflect a special coupon discount. Prices in the price guide reflect any instant rebates stacked with a coupon code. That's it, so easy to do. There are hundreds of Macs that are discounted and there's even some iPads, Apple Watches, and monitors too. Now, let's get back to our other video. So that's it. Apple's done a lot with watchOS 10 and I think this is a fantastic update to Apple's titular wearable. I think you guys are gonna really like it when watchOS 10 ships later this year. Let me know what you think and if you're currently testing watchOS 10, what is your favorite of all the new features? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more new videos including on Apple software updates coming your way.